Welcome to our first class. The Internet began in the late 60s as a research project for the Department of Defense. The World Wide Web actually was developed much later in around 1989-90. It wasn't until actually 1994 with the release of Netscape that it became popular. The web was developed by Tim Berners-Lee who also developed the HTML language and the HTTP protocol. The HTML is the language that web pages are written in. HTTP is the communication protocol that determines the, how web pages are sent from the server and received in the browser. So if we look at a website as being a collection of linked documents with the individual documents known as web pages. Now a web page can contain not only text but images, audio, video, and other types of technologies. So we see the web page is stored on a server and displayed in the browser commonly called a client. So it is written in HTML and the browser and server communicate using HTTP. The browser displays or interprets the HTML so that we actually see the web page. Now this is an old picture of the Palomar College homepage, but if I were to click on a link I would be requesting a file from the server. The server would actually send that file to me. So we see a request being made when a link is clicked. The browser sends the request to the server. The server finds the file and sends it back to the browser. The browser displays the information. Now supposing we didn't have a specific file, supposing we were just typing in something like www.palomar.edu, how would the server know which page to send back? Well, it sends a request to that directory, to that folder on the server, and what it does if no page is specified it will search for what is called the default file. So on the web server, every folder or directory has what's called a default file. And if no file is requested, that is what will be sent back. Now, the, the common name for the default file de depends on the server. The most commonly used name is index.html, but you may see others. Now the only difference between index.html and index.htm is that in the early days of the internet all the servers were Unix and therefore they could contain four character extensions. Windows in the early 90s could not so therefore all of our pages had to be written .htm. It is still fine to do this, but as long as you do it consistently. In other words, the file name which must match the um, syntax in your HTML code. Alright, so HTML stands for the Hypertext Markup Language. It is not a programming language or a formatting language, but it is a markup language. It describes the structure and content. Now, XHTML is the latest official version of HTML. HTML5 is the next version, which is currently being used. 
Okay, the initial goal of XHTML back in the 2000 was portability, accessibility, and standardization. This was accomplished, a lot of it, by the separation of content from presentation by using style, cascading style sheets, which is CSS. So we see that the use of CSS was introduced in the XHTML standard. And what happened was CSS replaced many traditional HTML attributes. So therefore, we had, had the content in the document, and the style was being um, called by the style sheet. We have several tools that we can use to create HTML documents. Um, an editor, and I have a link in the resources page on Blackboard for a free version of Coffee Cup. You can start out using Notepad. The uh, textbook uses Notepad. There are visual creators and also converters such as Microsoft Word. You can go to File and Save as a web page. But the code is very difficult to work with. Okay, so let's start looking at the HTML language. The language consists of elements, also known as tags. An element has an opening and a closing tag, or just can be a one-sided tag. The elements have attributes, and the attributes have values. Back to the, ele to the HTML language. Let's look at these elements. For example, here we have the body element. The body element consists of an opening and closing tag. So we're looking at what is a two-sided tag, or an element contains tags. So we have the opening tag and the closing tag. Notice the closing tag, the name of the tag is preceded by the forward slash. These, an opening and closing tag will enclose something. Uh, it usually content, but it can be other tags. Tags can also be one-sided. For example, the break tag, which is a line break. It simply takes us down to the next line. These do not have any content in them, obviously, so they are considered to be empty tags or one-sided tags. Now, notice the two different ways that I have written this break tag. Notice one has the forward slash to the right of the name of the tag. That is the traditional XHTML syntax. When we changed from HTML to XHTML, we needed to terminate our one-sided tag. So you will see the forward slash at the end. And this is the syntax the book uses. HTML5, however, goes back to the way it was. It goes back to the original um, one-sided tag without the, the, the forward slash at the end. Whichever syntax you choose to use for this class is fine with me. I am not forcing you to write XHTML syntax because we're not going to be using it in the future. So we might as well just write it the way it's going to be. You will see it written both ways depend on other people's pages depending on which version of HTML they happen to be using. Okay, so let's take a look at our attributes and tags here. Uh, in the top blue square, we have the title tag, the opening and closing title tag. Now, the title is tag is actually displayed in the uh, title bar of the browser. It's not actually in the web page. So you see how the, the opening tag is written and the closing tag is written, and it contains some content. And take a look at where the forward slash goes. It goes in front of the name of the tag. Uh, the second blue square here, we have the image tag, which we'll talk about next week. And notice that the image tag is a one-sided tag. It just does something. It displays an image. Um, there are two attributes. Right? The attribute equals a value. Now, notice those attributes have double quotes, the values, excuse me, have double quotes around them. Here again, this is how we did it in HTML. It was the usual way that we wrote our code. 
Um, in XHTML, those double quotes were mandatory. In HTML5, they are no longer mandatory. So however you want to write it is fine with me. I personally like putting the double quotes there. So it's not a bad idea to do it that way. All right, so the document itself consists of two sections, the head section and the body. The head section is where information that the browser needs to understand goes. Our style sheets will go there. JavaScript goes there. The title tag and meta tags are up there. The body section is where everything you see in the browser goes. So here we have what are called the basic HTML tags. And notice the way I have them laid out. I like writing down, uh, you know, short syntax I'll write across. But when you when you contain a lot of code, it's easier to see it written down. Uh, the browser ignores white space. So if you want to indent and um, put carriage returns, that's fine. The browser does not honor that white space. So let's take a look at some elements. Here we see a paragraph tag. We have an opening and closing P tag. All right, so we have the, par the paragraph tag or the paragraph element. Like I said, a lot of people use the word element and tag interchangeably. Now, a paragraph tag is what's called a block level element, meaning it pretty much occupies the whole width of the page regardless of how much text is contained in the paragraph. Um, there is some type of line break on the top, some type of line break on the bottom. So it kind of spaces itself out from what's on top of it and what's on the bottom of it. Now, if you want all centering at this point in time, centering of text, centering of images, is done using style sheets. Whenever you see that style attribute, that is technically an HTML attribute, it is, call, it is not calling an HTML value. It is calling a CSS property and CSS value. So take a look at the syntax. It is style equals double quote property colon value. So we are setting the value for a CSS property. And the values for the text align property are center, right, left, and justified. Left, obviously, being the default. Everything starts on the left-hand side of the page. Okay, let's look at, let's look at some um, formatting tags. You have a bold tag and italic tag. Uh, that's called the B tag, uh, B for bold, and the I tag, I for italic. These are called inline elements, meaning there is no carriage return before or after. There's no separation. It does, there is no interruption in the flow of, of the, the content there. Comments, these are HTML comments. Notice the difference in the opening comment tag and the closing comment tag. Drastically different from our elements. Um, HTML comments do not display in the browser. It's a very nice idea to comment your code, especially if the code starts getting complex, so you know what's going on in it. We're also looking at heading tags. Heading tags are block level elements. There is a carriage return on the top and on the bottom. There's spacing in between what's on top of it and on the bottom of it. Um, and these sizes, H1 being the largest, H6 being the smallest, are just sizes that the browser uh, gives to it. And it, different browsers can render things a little differently. It's always a good idea to test your code in Internet Explorer and in another popular browser.